Good morning, everyone. I see that there are several of you who are on already. I like to put that little graphic on to let people get on. So I see we've got Julie and Becky and Karen and Karen and Diane and Kelly. Welcome and thank you for joining me again this morning. Um, today, we are actually going to be doing some Valentines. And so before we get started, um, I wanted to, a um, couple people asked me, do you just randomly pick somebody for your prizes? And that's not really what I do. I do randomly pick them, but it's actually computer generated. So if you leave a comment here, even just to say hello and say where you're from, even if you watch the replay, um, I take all comments. Um, I just list your names and I number all of you. And then I just go to the computer and I pick a random number out of all of those. And that is the winner of the cards from the week before. And then I do the same thing with sharing and I do the same thing with those who place an order. And so um, thank you so much for all of you who have made comments um, and also for those of you who have shared my video. Now with the sharing, uh, my friend Kathy mentioned this on her Facebook Live on Thursday and I have noticed the exact same thing. It'll tell me that nine people shared, but it'll only get list like four people's names. Um, I think if you're sharing from your phone, sometimes it doesn't recognize it for me as who shared it. So if you shared my video, if you wouldn't mind but taking a second to write a comment that said shared, um, that way if your name doesn't appear on my list of people who shared it, you will still be entered into the drawing. This week, there were some people who didn't show up, but because there were so few people that were on last week, I just went to anyone who made a comment or anyone who liked, and I went to their Facebook page and I found the nine people who had shared. And so thank you for those of you who shared. Um, please continue to share. That's how I can grow this. Thanks, Denise, for sharing, and Robin, and Julie, Karen. Thank you so much. That helps me a lot when I come to finding prizes. So that's where I'm gonna to start today, is with prizes. So um, for sharing from the week before, um, I still, or I'm sorry, for making a comment from the week before, I still have not heard from Jean Sluss Creed from Michigan. Um, if you watch this week, if you would please private message me your address so that I can send you the cards from that week before. Um, commenting last week, and winning the cards that I made last week, along with, I completely forgot um, last week to add and make the little envelope. So I went ahead and I added that for each of these cards is Kathy Hopped. Kathy, I think you are from Little Shoot. I think you are friends with my mom. And so I'm pretty sure that I can find your address if you are watching and you wouldn't mind um, shooting me um, a private message with your address, I will make sure they get to you. For making a comment, this week that person is going to win these opal rounds, which I am in love with. I put them on almost every single card. So this week for, this is for sharing, there were, like I said, nine of you that shared. And Sandy Calloway, you are the one who is going to be winning these. So I will get these in the mail to you. You will get some happy mail this week. Um, so you will be getting these Opal Rounds. Then for placing an order, um, this week you will be winning this Pretty Perennials stamp set, which was the million dollar stamp set of Dina Rico, um, who I have come to know through my upline, Kelly Atchison, and she's a wonderful person. And the winner of this is Tammy Marquardt. So Tammy, you will be getting this in the mail this week. So congratulations to all of our winners. Thank you to all of you who have helped to support and um, share my message. A um, Couple of things, um, I received a couple of cards in the mail this week and I wanted to share them with you because we can get inspiration from a lot of different people. So this is a card that I received from um, one of my team members, Cindy Winkleman. She was thanking me for a Christmas gift that I had given to her. Um, her son died this year, so I had um, given her an ornament that um, 
just kind of in memory of him that this was his first Christmas in heaven. And so she made this card and um, I had, she had won this designer series paper at my club. And so she used the designer series paper and she cut it out and um, even did some stamping on the inside. So this was from Cindy Winkleman. Thank you, Cindy. And this was from Shanna Roberts. Um, look at how beautiful this is. It's a fun fold. It flips up and then this flips down. And she had a little message in there again, thanking me for a gift that I'd given to her. She uses, I don't know if you can see it real well, but this tufted um, embossing folder, very cute design, um, that beautiful ribbon that was in the holiday catalog, the iridescent ribbon. So thank you ladies for that. So I think that is all that I have as far as um, announcements. Um, I am going to uh, go ahead and flip my camera right away and I'm going to get started stamping because I like to keep this if possible to um, a half an hour because I know we have a lot to do on Saturdays. So um, this week I am going to be using the Love All You Sweet, Love You Always Sweet, which is a super sweet, meaning that it has two stamp sets, two bundles within that stamp set. It also has designer series paper. This one has foil sheets. It also has some little dots. It has a metallic ribbon. It is beautiful. And so one of the stamp sets is always in my heart and it comes with these floral heart dies. This will be the second card that I'm doing. I will be using this stamp set. The first stamp set, at first I did not purchase this. I'm gonna admit to you, I looked at it and I'm like, I really don't need to have that with all the beautiful stamp sets in the catalog. I'm just not sure if that's one that I have to have. Then my friend, Kathy Miller, who might be on here today, I don't know um, if she's on here or not. I haven't completely kept up with all the comments, but um, she ended up doing this for a um, sweet swap that I'm in with other demonstrators where we each take a sweet and we make four cards and send them to each other so that we have a good variety of cards as samples. And the cards she made, I'll share with you at the end, but they were absolutely beautiful. And I'm like, I need to have that set. And so after I saw her cards, I ended up ordering this set. It came in this week. And so I really wanted to feature this with my Valentine's cards because believe it or not, the end of January is next weekend. And we will be into, um, February before we know it and Valentine's Day will be here before we know it. I don't know. I feel like as I get older, the years go faster and faster and faster. So I am going to be featuring this along with the True Love Designer Series paper. And I'm going to admit to you that this paper did nothing for me in the catalog. I like black and white, but I'm not like crazy about black and white. I'm more of a, I like to have different colors and things like that. So when I saw this, I was like, hmm. I don't know, not so crazy about it. So it's got all these floral images on one side. All right, so you can kind of see that. I'll bring it up a little bit. This I got at a, um, I didn't attend it, but I attended it online uh, for demonstrators. Isn't this awesome? She put all this together for us. So that's one side. You flip it, it'll, you flip it over, flip it in. Um, you flip it over and you have all these black and white um, papers. So I'm like, hmm, yeah, it's okay. Well, then I saw what people were doing with it. So this big piece of paper like this in white, look at this. You don't need to have the stamps. You can buy the paper. You can color in these flowers. Now I had to fussy cut this with the scissors, but it didn't really take me that long. It's not like it was hard to fussy cut. And look at how pretty that would be on a card. Okay. And that's the paper. It's not even um, the uh, it's not even the uh, stamp set, so I could get by with that. Then I just took a strip of this paper and I took one of our blending brushes, which if you haven't gotten these babies yet, they are fabulous. And I just took some um, flirty flamingo here, and I just put that over the top of the paper, and now. It's not white anymore. It's pink and I can add pink to my paper. So um, 
after I saw the things that could be done with it from my friend Kathy and also other people online, um, I uh, thanks Christine. Yes, Christine is saying she loves my little stack of papers. And she's the one that put all of these together, believe it or not, for 60 of us. She's amazing. Um, but when I saw the things that you could do, I was like, yes, I have to have that paper. So I'm going to go ahead and get to stamping. We're going to be using the Forever and Always stamp set. And we are also going to be using the True Love Designer Series paper along with, oh, I forgot to show you this. Um, Karen Rofing, this is uh, right up your alley. Um, this is the um, Love You Always foil sheets. Okay, those are at the end. And then we have this right here, which is the Love You Always designer series paper. So this is like a Sahara sand and then a metallic that um, matches with that. Um, we have one that is in Blushing Bride and there is a metallic that's almost like a rose gold that matches that. And then there is one that Oops, that, this one's the Blushing Bride, sorry. And the metallic that matches that. And then there is the Rococo Rose and the metallic that matches that. So absolutely beautiful. I'm going to be using one of the foil sheets in my second and this card as well. But you're not really going to recognize it. So I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to set my catalog aside. And we are going to get to stamping. So in this first card... I am using black and white and also a pop of red. I always feel like when I'm using black and white, it needs a little pop of color. So it could be pink, it could be blue, it could be purple. I chose red today. So this is eight and a half by five and a half. I scored it at four and a quarter. I have two layers that are four by five and a quarter. One is going to be for the outside. The other one is going to be for the inside of this card. I have a piece of real red that's three and seven eighths by five and one eighth inch. And I have a piece of that DSP that measures two and a quarter by three and seven eighths inches. So I have these measurements. I put them in the um, description of this um, Facebook Live already for you. I will also get them up on my blog later today with some pictures um, so that you can do that. You are also going to need a scrap of that, um, that foil paper. You are going to need a scrap of basic black. You're going to need a scrap of real red. And I don't really call this a scrap <laughs> because it's kind of big, but you need something to cut out um, a frame. Okay, and so those are going to be the scraps that you need. I'm going to go ahead. I'm using some Memento ink today, and I'm also using some Real Red ink. And I'm going to open that later when I use it. So I'm going to start with my scrap of Real Red paper. And I am going to take this Memento ink, and I'm going to stamp one of these flowers that were from that stamp set. Okay. So even though it could be white and you could color it in, I chose to stamp it on the red paper. There is a die in the coordinating dies that will cut that flower out for me. And so through the magic of TV, I have that somewhere here and I just have to find it. <laughs> I will bring it out here as soon as I find it. Um, so that is the first thing we're going to start with. We are going to also, um, and I have to find this because I'm going to need to stamp on that frame. You know how when you have like everything set way ahead of time and you're like, oh, I'm way ahead of the ball game. And now I'm here I am live and uh, I can't find the things that I did. So what I'm going to do, we're in a little bag with the dies. Here are my dies. So I'm going to bring my little, little boss in here. I'm going to cover this ink, first of all. I'm going to open this up. And we are going to go ahead and we are going to cut this right here live. So I'm going to get my plates. This means it's going to take just a tad bit longer than I had originally planned. 
So I'm going to put this down. Actually. And my white. I don't know if my paper is going to be too wide. I'm going to have to go over to my big shot and cut this one. Sorry, ladies. I don't know why I'm so discombobulated today. All right. Here is my... This is from the um, Stitch So Sweetly um, dies. And I am going to stamp in the Memento ink again. You so very much. Because I'm going to use that word love in. All right, not too bad considering I had to do that over a camera. Um, I wish I could find all of my little magic of TV. Um, stamps that I, or things that I have cut out. I don't know where I put them. Uh, they were here this morning. And I, it's not that I have even that big of a mess here. Um, I must have set something on top of them. So, um, let me see if I put them in the other card box. I did not. All right, I am going to run over to my big shot and I'm going to cut this flower out because we are going to need that. The other thing that we are going to need, we are going to need the love cut out of this. And then there is an outline of that word love. And I'm going to cut that out of here. So give me just a second to cut these out since I can't find my cut images. You ladies are being so patient with me. I really, really appreciate it. Um, it shouldn't take me too long to do this. Um, I do want to make sure that I cut that flower out perfect. So that one takes just a little bit. The other ones I can just quickly pass through. You know that I'm going to find this later and then I'm going to have everything cut so that I can make another card. So um, thank you so much for your patience this morning. All right, so here is the outline of that love. Notice that when the love cuts, it cuts it apart with a capital L and then the of part. And now I just have to quickly cut out this flower and we will be all set to go. This one I have to be a little bit more careful with because I have to make sure I have it lined up and that I don't move it when I put my top plate on. I think I'm doing okay. Okay, my upline Kelly, when she does lives and things don't go exactly the way she uh, plans, she always says that she's having hot flashes and I feel like that's what I'm having right now, is a hot flash. So thank you so much for your patience. Um, and uh, I am back and I think I'm ready to put this together now. So we are going to start with our card base. We are going to fold that in half and I'm just gonna set these aside for just a second now that I have them cut. I am going to take this three and seven eighths by five and one eighth inch layer and run it through the Tasteful Textile. Again, one of my favorite embossing folders and through the magic of TV, I do have that one done. And I'm going to attach that to one of these Whisper White layers. So again, anytime I'm using an embossing folder, I really, really love to use liquid glue because it gets in all the little cracks and crevices. Thank you guys for your support and telling me that I've got this in the middle of a little panic here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and line this up. And with the liquid glue, it gives me a little wiggle room. It wasn't on there straight to begin with. So I was able to pick that up and straighten it up. So on top of this is going to be a layer of 
this black and white DSP. And I'm not coloring it this time. I'm gonna leave it, look at, I had colored it to practice on the back and decided I wanted to leave it just black and white on this card and not color it red. So I'm just gonna put a layer. And a lot of people ask me, where do you come up with your ideas for cards? And you know, you can spend hours and hours and hours on Pinterest and I have wasted a lot of time on Pinterest. Um, but with all of these swaps that I got in, I received this swap card, which I thought was a really cute card. But I was like, okay, I've got to look for something and I want to just have um, sort of like a template of what I wanted to use. So this was the card I grabbed and this is what I'm making instead from this layout. So the reason I get in all of these swaps and being a demonstrator, you get invited to do a lot of different swaps. I'm gonna put a little more glue in this corner, I missed. Um, there we go. Um, one of the th reason I get into swaps is because even if I don't copy a card exactly the way it was, I have a ton of ideas of layouts that I can use. And so I hope that if you attend my classes, even if you don't have the stamp sets that I use, and you like a particular layout, you can go ahead and you can copy that layout and make it the way you want with stamps that you have. All right, this is the double stitched real red ribbon and I am just going to run a strip and use a little bit of scotch tape. Put that scotch tape on here. I really cut this one sort of short and I'm gonna redo that. I think I'm flustered, and so now, because I'm flustered, I'm uh, running into all these little issues. So I'm going to go ahead and add that tape here and here. And then once I have that added, I'm going to just take a deep breath, and I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the back of this and add that to my card front. Okay. So again, if I bring my sample back here that I was working off of, it's starting to look a little bit different. This one was a masculine card, so they probably didn't want to do any ribbon. Um, usually if it's a masculine card, I might do some twine, but not usually ribbon on a masculine card. Okay, now I'm going to take and bring in this. And one of the things that I learned or that I discovered is that I can take this softer color, not the pink one, but the one that kind of goes with the um, Sahara sand. I'm going to take my dark, real red uh, Stampin' Blend, and I am just going to, and this is going to make a little bit of a mess here on my paper. I should have brought another piece of paper over, but I wasn't thinking here. Um, I'm just going to color over that and make this a red foil. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of it. And now, because this is a metallic paper, it is slippery. <laughs> and so it is sort of wet on here. Um, and so you do have to be a little bit careful. Uh, you may want to let it dry a little bit before you do a lot with it. Um, and so what I'm going to do is because... I am on TV, well, through the magic of TV, I had this all done already, but those are sitting somewhere, probably underneath something that I pulled out um, as I was getting ready today. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit of liquid glue. Now, this outline of black is really nice, the, the word love that's outlined is really nice because it helps you to know where you need to place this letter. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this L so that there's an equal, Bit of the outline behind it and then I have the of <laughs> for the from the, that part of the love and again I'm gonna go ahead and add some glue around it and put that on there and because this was a little bit wet yet I can see a few places where I can see my fingerprints so I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna Go over those just a little bit. 
going to bring this label back in here that I had cut. And that love is going to go right there on my card. So love you so very much. But of course, that has to be popped up. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that up on some dimensionals. Um, I'm actually going to get the little dimensionals here. And I'm going to put that there. And then that flower that we had there, that needs a little Stella, a little Wink of Stella. It needs some glitter. Now, when you add Wink of Stella to a darker color, at first, it doesn't look all that great. And you're like, oh, why did I do that? But once it dries, it looks fabulous. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of dimensionals onto that flower and pop that baby up right over here. Okay, so that just added a little bit to that card. And then that, just like the Happy Father's Day greeting from the card that I used as a sample, that's just going to be attached right over here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little liquid glue because I popped up the love, because I plopped up that um, flower, I am not going to pop up this layer. I just put this layer flat. Okay. I'm going to bring my ribbon back in and I'm going to add just a knot along the side of it just to, um, I kind of wanted to see where the love was, so I didn't do that until I had my layer down. And now I'm going to go ahead and tie this in a knot. And it's laying pretty flat, but to sort of ensure that through mail or through putting it in the envelope or sitting on my table waiting to go out, um, I am going to take a glue dot and I'm going to pop a little glue dot behind there. The other thing I'm going to do is because I want this to lay flat where it is, I'm going to take a glue dot and I'm going to, my friend Christine who's watching, um, always says manipulate your bows the way you want them to look. Add more glue dots. You don't have to just add one. So I'm going to add a couple of glue dots behind there to make that stay exactly where I want it to stay, right? The front of my card isn't done yet. It needed just a little bit of something else. So in this suite, we have these black matte dots and I am going to add, let me take your pick tool is here. Just gonna add a few of those to the front of this, just to give it a little bit more. Maybe it just needs two. I usually like to do three. I'm gonna put it right there. Okay, so the front of my card is complete. Now I need a little bit of something for the inside. And so I am going to be using the Happy Valentine's Day stamp that comes from the stamp set meant to be, which is in the annual catalog. And so don't forget about the annual catalog, even though we get so excited because we have this new catalog coming out, um, we don't wanna forget about our annual catalog. So I'm gonna do the Happy Valentine's Day there. I'm gonna take that flower that I used and I'm going to come back to my black ink. Again, I wanted to bring that black in. And then I'm going to take that same Stampin' Blend that I used, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to color that flower in. And I'm actually going to grab my lighter one. This card I didn't actually completely make before. I can show you what I made. I wanted to do something different to show you that there could be a variety of different ways to make the same card. 
going to bring in some of these. And then I'm going to come with my lighter Real Red, and I'm going to color in the rest of it. Christine, yes, lots of glue dots when you're doing a ribbon. If you want it to look nice when the person takes it out of the envelope, lots of glue dots can help with that because I know we've all had cards that we've received from other people maybe or you wonder, okay, I put this in the envelope. I wonder what in the world it's going to look like by the time the person gets it because it's been jammed in that envelope and it's gone through the mail and everything. Um, if you put a lot of glue dots on, I find that they end up still looking really, really nice when they get there or when they the person takes them out of the envelope. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to the inside of my cart. Love you so very much. Happy Valentine's Day. So that is card number one. I'm going to bring in the one that I made last night because I do my best work under pressure. Of course, I do not, um, I had all week, every night this week, I had stuff that I had to do for school, so I was up late, but I could have stamped a little bit, um, but I didn't. This one, I used the um, heart dies that go with that meant to be stamp set. There's all different hearts, and I put a heart, and I put some Stella on that, and I used some of those little um, resin hearts that are in that snail mail set, and again, um, here I put a little strip of the DSP. I wanted to bring that flower in. So maybe if you're doing it for, um, because you're doing it for a husband or boyfriend or somebody that um, you want to use the heart rather than the flower. Um, if you're using it just for a friend, uh, maybe you want to use the flower instead of the heart. Two different variations of the exact same card. Can't even tell that that was the foils that were in the um, Love You foils because um, they, they're they colored red and there isn't red in that um, combination, but you could color them pretty much any color you wanted to. So that is card number one, Valentine number one. I'm gonna go ahead and get all of that stuff out of here and bring in the supplies for card number two. And I'm already at a half an hour because of my little blunder, but that's okay. Hopefully you can stick on just a little bit longer. Um, I'm gonna get all of my card supplies up here. Oh, I do have, and um, I'll do this afterwards. You all know how you can make a matching envelope. Actually, I'll do this real quick. It doesn't take that long. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little glue to the flap of this envelope, and I'm going to take that black and white paper that I used on that card. I'm just gonna line that up along the edge. Then I'm gonna take my trimmer. And I was playing around with all kinds of colors on the back of this paper last night when I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was watching Christine, um, who's on here. Christine is the one who did the winter scape that I said I did that sand and sea display for. And she did such a wonderful job. Well, she took all the swap cards that were um, uh, used at that and all the swap cards that she's done. And she did, uh, was it two hours long last night, Christine? Um, all of the swap cards, she just showed them all for people so that they could get um, an idea of the different cards that you can make with different things from in the catalog. So there's that Valentine with a little matching envelope. All right. Card number two. This we're gonna switch from red to blushing bride. This is four and a quarter by 11. I scored this at four and a quarter and at five and a half. And last night when Christine was doing her cards, this was a card that I did in a swap with Dina Rico. And um, she kept saying, oh, here's another one of these book folds. Here's another one of these book folds. This is a book fold, so you need to start with a four and a quarter by 11, scored at four and a quarter and five and a half. Because what that does is it makes your half of a card like this 
And what I'm going to do at this four and a quarter is I'm going to fold this back the opposite way. Right, see how I did that? This makes a square card. Now, when I was looking at the catalog, the inspiration for this card came from, um, and I did have a post-it note in here, I thought, but I pulled it off right before we started. Um, this card right here was sort of my inspiration, but I didn't want to make a square card. I wanted to do something else. Then I looked at this card and I saw how they used the border dies here and had those little hearts. And I'm like, oh, I want to combine this with that. And so I came up with a card and I did it as an anniversary. Today I'm making it as a um, Valentine. So you're going to take some glue and in this one and a half, or it's actually it's one and a quarter inch section, you are just going to glue that down so that it opens sort of like, a, some people call it a photo album, some people call it a book. Okay, so that is what we're going to do with that. You need a piece of Whisper White cardstock that measures four by four, and that's going to be for the inside. You are going to need, for this card, I am using the um, Oso Ombre um, Designer Series paper, which is in the Celebration catalog. I always have to bring something Celebration, because if you buy one of these bundles that I'm featuring today, it's over $50, so you get something free. So this is a beautiful paper. Um, it has um, the ombre, so there's this is um, Bermuda Bay, there is Rococo Rose, there is um, Granny Apple Green, and there is, I think it's Rich Razzleberry, or it might be back Blackberry Bliss. Um, one of them is like this. The other sheets that are in there have these little dots on them like this, or these little circles but it still has that ombre look. Very, very cool. So you can get that free if you order one of these bundles or order $50. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to attach this paper, this designer paper, to the front of this card to bring in a little bit of Rococo Rose, which, oh, friends, that's gonna be leaving us at the end of this catalog because um, it is one of our in colors and they only stick around for two years. And then the good news though, is that we get new in colors. So we will be getting some new colors when that new catalog comes out. So in these dies is this edgelet that has these hearts. It's stitched and it has these little holes in it at the, as well. So what you are going to do is you are going to take this and you are going to run that through the embossing cut and you're going to do it on the other side as well. So hopefully through the magic of TV, voila, we have that done for us, okay? I also took a piece of Rococo Rose that is four and a quarter by one inch and I'm going to layer this right on top of that. See how that Rococo Rose then just kind of pops through those hearts and makes those hearts stand out. At first I was just gonna put the pink on the pink like they did in that card that was in the catalog because I really liked that. But then I was like, mm, this just needs something. Those, pop, those hearts need to pop. Oops, I need to get up here a little bit more so you can see me. They need to pop a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach this. And I'm going to set this along here. Sorry, I was trying to look at comments and then I was looking and I'm like, there's such a delay. I'm like, oh, did I turn off? <laughs> okay, so doesn't that just add something to that side? Oh, so pretty. 
then I am going to take, this is the ribbon that's in that, and it just sparkles. So I am going to take that, oh, and I have a lot here. Um, the other thing that I am going to use on this card, and they're right here. Look at these little hearts. Aren't they just the cutest? I am going to use one of those on this card. I did not on my swap card. I don't know why I cut myself this much ribbon. I think it was the end of the spool of ribbon. So I just took what was there. Don't really need all this much. So I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to actually cut this so it's easier to work with. So I'm going to make my first knot. And now notice you can either have the shiny side up or you could just do the pink side if you wanted to do the pink side. So I'm going to go ahead and put this little charm in here and finish my knot. This is a little bit tricky. I don't like doing stuff like this on TV. I like this about as much as um, tying a bow on TV. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this around and try to keep my finger in there. And I will just kind of play because this is a two-sided ribbon. You sort of have to play a little bit with it. to get it to lay nice. I want this you to be able to see that that is a heart. So I need to get that off to the side a little bit more. And kind of manipulate this. Like I said, I haven't really made this one. I'm making a variation. I'm switching it up so I can show you two different um, styles of cards. Kind of doing this on the fly here. And I'm going to go ahead and manipulate this a little bit so that you can see that that's a heart. And again, I am going to need some glue dots in here because I want this ribbon to stay so that I can see the shiny side. I don't want that other side. Unless you decide you want both of them to be that way and flip it around, but I'm sort of manipulating my ribbon so that the shiny side is going to stay up. So bring in those glue dots again. I'm gonna put one on the back to hold that knot right where I want it, along with that heart. I'm going to flip over my ribbon the, the direction that I want it, and I'm going to put another little glue dot right down here to hold that in place where I want it. See how that works? It looked like it was a mess. And now that little glue dot has it sitting right where I want it to sit. I have that heart right where I want it to be. And I'm gonna put that little tail right where I want it. And voila, we have our outside book part uh, made. Then we are going to use this beautiful die. Okay, it cuts out a heart, has all these flower images around the outside, and through the magic of TV, I have that done already. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I just absolutely love how that looks um, on that Rococo Rose. So I'm going to take a little bit of liquid glue, and I am going to attach that two, and I'm just going with this liquid glue. I am just going to some of the big places. So I've got like these little leaves and I've got these things here. I've got the center of the flowers um, along the side here is a little bit of bigger space to put that glue. You don't want the glue oozing out. Okay, you just need a little bit, but find the places where you have a little bit more paper and add the glue there. Now you could use the adhesive strips. The only thing, reason I didn't wanna use the adhesive strips on this, if I use the adhesive strips on a piece of white paper, that entire heart is going to have an adhesive strip on it. And to me, that was just like a waste of one of those adhesive strips because I wouldn't need the adhesive strip 
behind that. So there's plenty of glue on here to be able to make that stick. Okay, then because this is so shiny, I wanted to bring some shine into my heart. So I'm going to use my Wink of Stella. I'm gonna go ahead and, there we go. Grab a different Wink of Stella. That one might be dead. I have two new ones that I have to start and I like to use mine until they're dead. There we go, that one I can see. That one has way too much now. I just got a big blob on it. So now I'm going to have to work that all in. Okay, I wanna make this card have some shine to it. And that will dry. It looks really clumpy right now um, because I had squeezed it and didn't realize that there was a whole blob coming out. You normally wanna do that on like a piece of scrap paper like this right after you squeeze it. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. In this, um, this is going to be a scrap that I have. Um, in this uh, die set, there is this ribbon, which is so pretty. Um, and so what I'm gonna do, because I wanted to make this a Valentine card, uh, there is a happy anniversary um, greeting, but there is also this Be My Valentine. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that Be My Valentine and I'm gonna stamp it. I am going to use some, I debated whether I wanted to use gold or whether I wanted to use white. I opted for white and I'm just gonna throw a little bit of this. As you saw last week, my um, white embossing fold, my white embossing powder needs just a little bit of cleaning. I've got like the ends of um, dimensionals, which are everywhere in my house. Um, but <laughs> I've got those inside of there and I don't know how they got in there. Now we're going to go ahead and heat set this and then we are going to cut it out with this banner. And through the magic of TV, I have that done. Okay, so I heat set that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, there is a score line on this banner and I'm just going to go ahead and fold on those score lines. And that is going to go over our heart just like this. So it says, be my Valentine. I thought the white went nice with the white heart. You could do gold because there's like a little bit of gold in this ribbon. And I'm just going to take a couple of glue dots on the end, press hard enough, there we go, on the end of each of these ribbons, or on the end of this ribbon, and decide where I want it to go, and then press that down. See how that stands up over the top of that? Oh, so pretty. I don't know if you can see that dimension there. All right. Again, this will dry. It looks really, really heavy right now of Stella, but it will dry. Um, on the inside, um, I wanted to add a little something. And this time, instead of Happy Valentine's Day, um, what I thought I would do is um, I would just put something and send this to a friend. Even though it says, Be My Valentine, it's just kind of a saying that you use at Valentine's Day. So I'm gonna use the best kind of friend is a friend like you. And I'm gonna send this to my friend for Valentine's Day. And just like there are flowers on this um, heart, there are two-step flowers in that stamp set. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp with the Rococo Rose the outline of one of those and bring in some Blushing Bride or the inside of that flower. And then what I'm gonna do, close my ink pads because we know what happened last week, drop something right into an ink pad. Then I'm going to add this to the inside of that card.
right? So there is my second Valentine. Look at that beautiful little heart charm. Um, add something, that beautiful ribbon. Now, when I made it for my swap, um, I didn't make one for myself. And so last night I was contacting a whole bunch of people that I knew were in that swap. And I said, can you send me a picture of it if you have it? Because, and I watched Christine's um, for, um, thing and then I don't think I had it on when she did that one. I'm like, oh shoot, she didn't have mine either. So Kelly Atchison had it and Jody Peterson this morning sent it. So on this one, I did it a little bit differently. Now on my swap, I did happy anniversary and I did white emboss it, but I had used this ribbon instead of that fancy ribbon. I also, instead of using the ombre paper, just used some Rococo Rose and I ran it through an embossing folder, through the So Subtle's embossing folder. And here, instead of using the embossing, I ended up just using Rococo Rose on that Blushing Bride. And then on the inside, I used a different stamp from that set, You Are Always In My Heart, and did a flower. So a couple of different combinations. Do you like the charm? Add the charm. Do you like the little glitz of this ribbon? Then right, use that ribbon. If you like it more muted, use this. So a couple of different ways to create the same type of Valentine card. Or like I said, in my sample, it was a, um, I had it as an anniversary card. So I have some of that ombre paper here and I have my envelope. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some glue to the flap of my envelope and add that paper just to bring that Rococo Rose to the outside of my envelope. Okay, so I'm gonna press that on there really nice and good. I'm gonna grab my snips and oh, I am a Bermuda Bay fan, so I love the, the colors that they have in this Oso Ombre paper because um, those are colors that I would use all the time. <laughs> they are some of my favorite colors. So, all right, so now I have an envelope to go along with this card. And it matches the paper that's there. So we have Valentine, two different options there depending on your style. We have another Valentine, again, two different options depending on what your style is. Now, I promised you that I would show you the cards that Kathy Miller had made with this stamp set. And I do not know where I set them. <laughs> um, they're probably with my missing pieces that I had. Uh, but, 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 let me just look around here. I moved so much around this morning um, as I was getting ready and I don't know where I put those cards. And I really, honestly, my stamping room isn't that much of a mess. I just have a lot of swap cards sitting around and I don't know which pile I set them on. Here is a really glitzy one that I made <laughs> with that stamp set or that same style. Oh, Kathy Miller, your cards are so beautiful. Where did I set them? They're probably on my kitchen table or something. Probably had them in my hand when I went to go feed Lila and probably set them down there. I promise I will share them with you uh, next week when I will make sure that I do that first. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn myself around here. Um, again, I apologize. I feel like I'm frantic today <laughs> and um, I shouldn't be. I did spend a lot of time getting ready, uh, but uh, this morning getting Lila ready to, for me to be in here so that she wasn't barking the entire time um, and everything else, it it's just kind of a few things thrown around here. So. I will um, either come on here or I will um, show them next week. 
A uh, couple of things. I wanted to let you know that on Wednesday night at 6.30, I am going to be doing a Facebook Live, and I am going to be featuring um, the gold leaf. So this is that gold leaf. A lot of people ask me, how do you use this? So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can use this gilded leafing um, that on cards. So using different adhesives to be able to use it. So a um, couple of people who really like this have asked, how do you use it? So Wednesday night at 6.30, I will be live and we'll be demonstrating this. If you can't join in then, you can always watch the replay. And then next week, I will be live again at 9 o'clock. So thank you for joining me. I am so sorry that I was a little bit discombobulated today. Um, it, it's unlike me, um, but I think once I one thing happened, it just kind of uh, snowballed after that. So I appreciate you sticking with me. Um, I apologize that I went almost an hour, uh, but I hope that you enjoyed your morning with me, and I hope that you have an awesome day. Thanks.